Hi everybody. Welcome to another installment of the basic Fusion 360 tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about rendering images. So after we've generated a, a beautiful model, like I have this um, bottle opener that I've designed and I've actually um, inserted this model of a bottle as well here to render it with. Um, I'm going to walk you through how to do a simple render and then maybe adding a bit more uh, to it to just uh, make it pop. So, uh, so far we've been working in a design environment. We're actually going to move I'm going to open here our render environment. So um, this environment changes the toolbar completely. You have a completely different set of things here to work with. Um, you'll, you'll still have your browser tree with all your stuff in it, all the different models and operations that uh, you might have in your file. And then you also have um, this thing you'll here called the rendering gallery. So you can minimize this, you can maximize it. Um, and this is where all your renderings that you've generated are going to be saved. So uh, by default, my bottle has this steel material here, with uh, which by default Fusion 360 adds to all the things that you make. So let's start by talking uh, about some of the tools that we have here in our environment. So we have the Appearance tab, which contains a material library uh, and a way for you to modify these materials and add them to different components and faces. We also have the Scene Settings button. Here you can control the environment in which the object sits. You can control the background, the lighting, uh, the, the camera, like uh, focal length and exposure. You can add effects like depth of field. You can change the aspect ratio of the rendering. Uh, and then you also have an environment library here, which we'll, we're going to use all this stuff in a second, which contains some default library um, environment libraries, but you can also uh, go ahead and, and import custom environments here. So. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about uh, materials. So let's go into the appearance toolbar. So here, if we expand this just a tiny bit, uh, we'll be able to look at this uh, material library here. So uh, let's start by looking at some of the different components here in my design. So I have uh, a metal handle. So you can start. I can start by adding a, a basic uh, metal material, and I'm imagining this this metal some some kind of brushed. Uh, finish. So I'm going to open the the metal library. I'm going to head down to the uh, stainless folder, perhaps, and then I have this um, material called stainless steel brushed linear long uh, polish satin. And there's also these other materials that are grayed out are available to you, but you have to download them. So they're not included in your basic installation, uh, but they are downloadable. So all you need to do to use any of these is to just click the download button, and you'll be able to. To get them. So I'm going to drag this material called stainless steel brushed uh, to an object. So once you drag it to an object, it gets added to that object. Um, and this material has a, you know, texture going in a particular direction. And I can alter uh, a lot of things about this, this material in particular. For example, I can go to this top half of my appearance tab and I can see all the materials that are contained in my scene. So everything that I've already picked and used is here. So I can, uh, for example, double click this material I just added uh, and I can change numerous things about it. Um, I can for example, modify the color, the base color of the material. And I can create different effects here. Uh, I can change the scale of this texture file. I can make this brush texture look finer or coarse. Uh, or I can change the rotation of the texture that's applied to the object. So I can say, for example, I want this brushing to come in this way. Uh, and I can change how rough this um, map that is getting applied to the object is. And of course, these are all just basic adjustments, but you can actually go and click the advanced button and get um, an extended set of things you can modify. You can, for example, change the actual bump map that gets applied to the object to generate the steel texture. Um, you can uh, apply a map for uh, creating transparency. Uh, you can, again, adjust the, the roughness here. And different materials have different properties that you can uh, modify here. So I'm just going to exit here. I'm going to click Apply. Uh, and oh, sorry, I didn't change anything. I'm just going to click Cancel. Uh, so I've added one material to my library. And I put it on one of the parts. Uh, let me go ahead and look for um, maybe a plastic material. I'm going to minimize these things. I'm going to go. Let's see, maybe a painted material will be fine. Some some kind of glossy uh, material, maybe some kind of red glossy material that I can add to my handle. So I'm going to drag this over. And I'm going to select the, the handle here, uh, which is a separate object. And of course, you can you can add um, 
materials to separate objects, but you can also add materials to individual faces in your design. So uh, up here in the Appearance tab, you can either choose to add uh, the appearance to uh, bodies or components separately or just the individual faces. So if you select faces here, then you can actually drag this material. Let's say, for example, I want to paint this inlay in there. I can actually uh, go ahead and, um, oops, I can drag and select faces this material onto that face and it gets added just to that one face and I can do the same here on the other side you can add a lot of detail this way so now let's look at the bottle cap let me pop open my appearance tab and you can also by the way open up this appearance tab by just tapping on the A key on your keyboard so you, here we're going to use the search box for example I'm trying to look for uh, some kind of uh, aluminum. Oops, it's spelled the American way. Aluminum. So I get a bunch of search results here. So I don't have any within my favorites because I haven't added any favorites. But if I expand the Fusion 360 Appearance Library, there's 25 results uh, for aluminum. So all the materials to have the name aluminum get um, into this this uh, search result. So. Uh, I'm actually going to looking for this sort of satin aluminum here, uh, or maybe a bead blasted aluminum would be nice. I'm going to drag this onto the cap of my bottle. Great. And lastly, I'm going to look at the bottle itself, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and search for glass. I'm going to expand the results from the Fusion 360 Appearance Library, and here you have all the materials. Uh, that are named glass, and of course all, these are all base materials that you can modify and alter to your heart's content. Uh, I'm going to go for this opaque glass, which is called glass heavy color, and I'm going to drag that over to the bottle. And so I've added some basic materials to my scene. So let me close this up. Uh, so one of the important things to mention is that you can, uh, before you shoot off a render, and you know uh, something that your computer is going to, you know, process and then output an image for you, you can actually in real time preview uh, the result of everything you're doing, and you do that by using this tool called the In Canvas Render. So what it what that does is that it uses your CPU and GPU in your computer to generate um, a, a live rendering, if you will, at maybe a lower resolution on your screen. Uh, and it'll give you a full preview of things like lighting, materials, everything you add to the scene. So uh, there's this button here uh, that has this little green play button. This starts the in canvas renderer. So if I click this, you'll see that the scene updates and it becomes you know more refined over time. You'll see this progress bar here on the right side, which lets you know how many iterations it's processed. Uh, the speed at which it does this depends a lot on your computer and how capable it is. So uh, some computers are going to have you know, a hard time you working on the object while you have the in canvas render um, turned on. So you might actually want to use it, get a preview, and then you can stop it and keep working on your file. Uh, and you can hit play again to get another preview. Uh, if you have enough horsepower on your computer, you'll be able to actually work as you have this on. But that'll maybe happen if you have, you know, a, uh, like a gaming computer, or something with a powerful CPU or or GPU. But it, not not in every machine. So um, I'm going to stop the in canvas render. But, but before I do that, I want us to notice one thing about this this bottle, and that is that this glass is still quite translucent. It's not really. Uh, as opaque as the beer bottle that I'm picturing in my head is. And I can go ahead and modify that. I'm going to go to my appearance panel uh, and here I can see all the materials that I've added to my part and one of them is the heavy color glass. So I can go and double click it and get its properties. So there's a property here that's interesting about these glass materials. It's called absorption distance. Uh, this uh, distance, the, the larger this distance is, the more the light can penetrate into the object. So if I make this, you know, like 100 millimeters from 30, it'll be much more uh, translucent. A lot of light's going to get through. And if I make this a really low number, I'm going to make this 3 millimeters, the glass becomes quite opaque. And this is closer to the uh, bottle glass that I'm trying to make. I can also, by the way, take this chance to alter uh, the color of the bottle as well. I can change that. Make it this you know, very dark sort of amber tint on the glass. I'm happy with that. 
Uh, you can also change the refractive index to see how much light refraction there is in your object. If you're trying to, for example, simulate something that is very thick glass, you want a higher refractive index. And if you have something that's very thin glass, you might want to lower that number to get more realism. So I'm going to say done. And I'm going to close the appearance panel. And I have this you know, a pretty decent now preview. And again, uh, you can uh, invest as much time as you want. And some, you might want to communicate this design to a client really quickly. You might want to shoot off something in a few minutes with basic materials like this. You can output a render just now. And actually, let's go ahead and do that. Let's actually look at how renders get outputted. So uh, here you see this little uh, teapot icon, which is the universal icon for rendering. Uh, if you open this panel, you get all these settings for outputting a rendering. So uh, these are by default going to, they're going to default to the the screen size and proportion that you have. So I have a very wide window open. So I have a pretty wide aspect ratio here. Uh, one thing that I forgot to mention is that you can actually uh, narrow down the, like the, the size of the canvas that you're trying to work on. But we'll do that a little bit later. Uh, I'm just going to leave this rendering in this resolution here. Uh, of course, there's a lot of uh, predetermined settings for you to try for size, aspect ratio. Um, type of exposure is always going to be set to native. Um, and here's a really interesting, interesting thing about Fusion 360. You can actually send your renderings uh, to the Autodesk cloud to be rendered there by a server. Uh, so you can, you can shoot these off to the cloud. They get put into a queue, then they get processed, uh, and then you can download the file. If you have an education license on Fusion 360, I believe you have unlimited credits to, to do so. If you have a commercial subscription, you need to purchase credits to use the the cloud. So if you have you know very big complex projects, you don't want to waste time or resources uh, rendering in, in your own computer, or maybe the scene is too complex for your own computer to render, you can send it off to the Autodesk cloud to be rendered. For now, we're going to choose the local renderer, renderer, which is going to create the image here locally in my computer. So um, the rendering quality, you want to set that to final, and I'm going to hit render. And when I do that, uh, it'll say that it started a local rendering. And here in my rendering gallery, I'll see a progress bar start filling up. Uh, and this is going to let me know the, the progress of my rendering. And again, this is going to depend a lot on the speed of your computer. So uh, the rendering is generated. It still isn't downloaded to my computer, but I can actually open it up, see this preview of it, which is a small preview. And then I can head up here to the toolbar on this window and hit the download button. Uh, once I do that, I get to uh, save the uh, rendering to whatever folder I choose. So I'm going to save it here to my desktop. And now I have a, a copy of the um, rendering that I generated. I'm going to pop it open here for you. All right. So we've generated a rendered image. You can insert that into whatever you need to. Um, all right. So let's add a little bit more realism to this scene. So I'm going to stop the in-canvas renderer. And now I'm going to ha go ahead and actually try to hide the bottle opener body itself. Because I want to work here on the cap, and I want to add some detail to this cap. And I have this label that I want to add to, to my cap. So I'm going to head up here to the toolbar, to this tool called Decal. So it lets you place an image on a selected face. Uh, if you have a PNG image with transparency, then the image it get, actually gets transparency on top of your part. So I'm going to click decal, and I'm going to go ahead and look for um, a folder here that I've created where I have um, some files meant for this bottle opener. So I have a, a label here that I'm going to put on the glass. I have a label that I'm going to put on the cap, and I have uh, another texture here that I will we'll put in in a second. So I'm going to select the beer cap uh, texture. I'm going to click open. This image is a PNG image, PNG file with transparency. So I've selected the image, and now you can see that it'll ask me for a face to use. So I'm going to choose uh, one of these top faces on the uh, bottle cap itself. And now I get a modifier here to actually scale up this uh, decal and you know, place it precisely where I need to. I can edit that uh, here if I need to edit you know, very precisely. Uh, I can deselect this thing called chain faces if I want my decal to sit just on one face of the object. In this case, I have like this dome structure at the top. So if I do that, I only get it on half. 
of my beer but uh, beer cap but you might want to uh, deselect this for example if you're trying to get your texture just to sit on one face and not be on the back of the object um, another thing that's uh, interesting here is you can choose you can change the opacity of the label to be whatever you want so I'm gonna make this a little bit transparent and I'm gonna click OK and um, anything you add that's a decal actually gets put into a um, folder um, here so if you go ahead and look at uh, the different objects here I have on the tree you can actually go and look at the object where this cap sits um, and uh, there will be a, a decal folder and then a, a decal that's editable so you can go find the, the name of the image you inserted and you can right click it you can say edit decal and you can go ahead and change these parameters again so yeah you can see that material has a texture here and if we start the in canvas renderer the texture of the material gets inherited by the decal itself as well it looks very natural Great. So uh, now let's work on the um, bottle. And let me actually go ahead and uh, bring the opener body back in. So let's add uh, the label here to the to the bottle. You can, of course, start by selecting the face uh, that you want to insert it to, or you can do it the other way around. You can start with the tool and then select the face. I'm going to select here the face. I'm going to say uh, add a decal, uh, insert from my computer. I'll go look for the uh, label file and it'll pop open here. I can use my modifiers now to rotate this. If I hold the shift key, then I snap to five degree increments. So I can find that nice 90 degree rotation here. I can move this around. I can scale it up and down. Uh, I can find the exact location where I want my uh, label to sit. Sometimes when you have very dark, dark materials, you can see the outline here, but this is actually a transparent PNG and, and this will become transparent as well. Uh, there's also tools here to flip your images um, and you can select if you want to chain faces or not um, for example sometimes if you uh, deselect so if you sorry if you select chain faces you'll get a few glitches here like here it's trying to place the decal on both sides of the object and uh, then I can deselect chain faces uh, and that'll get rid of this at least for the rendering uh, when it gets outputted so I've added a decal here to my bottle. Um, I'm going to minimize here the rendering gallery so we can look at it, it a little larger. Uh, so I'm going to hit in canvas render. And here I can see a preview of how that's going to look. See how the label gets neatly cut around where the uh, image has PNG transparency. And, and you can, of course, do that by yourself by uh, working on these images in Photoshop if you're making them yourself. All right, so we added a bit more realism. Let's go a little further. Let's insert uh, another decal here on the bottle itself uh, with a small detail. So I'm going to go to decal. I'm going to open uh, this image that I have. And by the way, I'm going to link all the uh, downloads for these uh, images here in the, in the video description. I'm going to choose this image called droplets, which is a transparent PNG with just water droplets, such as you know, condensation that gets put on the bottle. Uh, and I'm going to choose the glass here. You can see it gets inputted very small. If I zoom in, I can see the, the texture that I'm going to try and put in. So you, you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Uh, so I'm going to rotate this. I'm going to place this in a little irregularly because uh, I want this to look nice and natural. And I'm going to reduce the opacity to about 30% or so. And OK. So I have some condensation uh, droplets here. And it's a small detail. Maybe it'll show better when we do something like a close up. But if I see if I start the in canvas render engine, um, it's a small detail that makes all the difference when you start adding uh, lighting and, and other camera effects, which we'll get to in a second. So we're looking good. And we haven't even touched the, the environment where this sits. Right? We've just added materials, we've added a few decals to this. I'm going to stop the in canvas renderer now. Uh, let's look at the scene settings window. So let's talk about all these tools top to bottom. So first of all, this is the default brightness or the amount of light in the environment. Uh, this is just uh, the, the, the lighting coming from the, the HDRI image that's being projected on your object. So there's no physical lighting on the scene yet. 
Uh, and you can change this uh, if you want something that's a little lighter, I would say maybe go with 1500 units. And you can see there's a small difference here when I start my rendering engine, it's a little brighter. Um, you can change the position of your uh, environment. So when you click on this positioning uh, icon, you'll get this tool here at the bottom. Uh, you can change the height and the rotation of the environment. So the, the, the important one you're gonna manipulate all the time is the uh, environment rotation. So if you uh, s move the slider, you can see how the lighting on the scene just rotates around. I can really adjust this to, to, uh, to the right place to just illuminate the, the right things. I can really manipulate this to uh, have you know, my reflections and shadows be exactly where I need, uh, have the light really illuminating the part of the object that I'm trying to focus in this particular um, perspective. Um, I'm going to click this position icon again to close this. Uh, the background, you can select whether to have a solid color or to have the default environment image. So if we choose the environment image, you can kind of see the uh, image that gets put. So this is actually the image that's being projected onto your object to generate all these lights and reflections around it. So uh, if you look up, you can actually see that's, that's a light that is there. Uh, and this is all again gen you know, generated by just uh, uh, an image file, an HDRI image file. And sometimes it might be desirable to use the the default background. Sometimes, uh, most of the times, you, you don't use it. You just want that uh, lighting information to be projected onto your object. Um, you can go to this environment library tab and actually find more environments that ship with Fusion 360. So you can actually drag these to the, the scene and then they get added. So see, this one has different types of lights. This one has warmer colored lights. It has a few more lights. It has this like grid lighting there. I have this warm light here uh, in front of the bottle. And by the way, you can go to um, different websites to actually download um, more of these uh, custom environments. Um, one that I've used a lot is called um, HDRI Haven. And uh, let me drag this onto screen. So HDRI Haven, you can go ahead and click here, HDRI, see their entire library, indoor, outdoor, studios, urban. Um, I can, for example, go into the urban category, uh, find something that seems interesting, like, oh, empty warehouse. And I can go ahead and um, scroll down, actually download different um, qualities of the same image. So I'm going to go with like a 4K uh, HDRI image. That's going to go uh, onto my downloads. Uh, then I can uh, go down here to attach custom environment. And you can go ahead and find the file you just downloaded. Uh, and it gets attached to your project. So here's the empty warehouse. So I can find a, a place to place this bottle you see and all the lights and all the objects in the environment just get projected to to the object so if you have particularly a larger scale object like a vehicle it's, it's something interesting to put it in the street to put it in a parking garage if you have a smaller object you can put it on a table i have this other environment here that i downloaded just recently um go ahead and find this So it's like a lounge. This particular um, environment has this uh, tabletop. I can actually rotate my bottle to be here on the tabletop and I have this nice window behind it uh, that projects light particularly well through the glass, right? I can, I can almost feel the transparency here uh, in the glass and I can, you can, I can rotate my object around uh, if I want it facing the the right way. Uh, another thing I can do is I can actually place the object in the correct uh, position. Sorry, it might be easier to stop my in-canvas renderer to actually do this. I can go ahead and find the right angle and then I can go back to my settings. I can of course go to the position uh, button. I can rotate 
my environment around and just find that exact spot I can start the in canvas renderer again and there I go sitting on on the table so maybe I want to center this so let's say let's say I want to shoot off a rendering here for my Instagram I like this um, uh, but I want a very specific site let's say I want to render a square image so here in the scene settings if you scroll down here to the camera section uh, first of all let's let's talk about these um, focal length for example you can simulate different types of lenses uh, something from you know a very flat lens if you go all the way up to like above 100 millimeters or a very wide lens wide angle lens something like a fisheye by just dragging this um, you can also change the exposure so if you have a lot of light in your scene or less light in your scene um, then you can also add a depth of field effect and take in mind this uh, take into account this is um, a lot of processing that is required for this so depth of field is you have some things in focus some things out of focus uh, and that sometimes adds a lot of depth and realism to the scene so I'm gonna check uh, depth of field here and it'll ask me for a center of focus I can click here on the label for the bottle so you see that by default everything except that one point is very blurry you can adjust the blur number to be something uh, smaller if you want a, a more subtle effect maybe let's see how 0.5 looks so that definitely adds uh, a lot of depth de depth to, to, to these scenes so um, I'm gonna scroll down here to the aspect ratio uh, drop down so I'm gonna select this there's uh, options here for different diff different standard aspect ratios so if I choose for example a 69 widescreen I can see that these black bars get generated at the, at the sides and it lets me know of the exact framing of the, the scene so I can frame my, my scene exactly as I want uh, I'm gonna choose a 1 1 square for example which would be a, an Instagram rendering perhaps of the object So I framed it. I like how that looks. Um, so I can close this. I can go back to my uh, teapot button for render. Uh, and for now, I can select exactly the resolution that I want. So maybe I want a larger image, let's say 2,000 by 2,000 pixels. I can also unlock my aspect ratio here and do something different. Um, by the way, you can also insert images of your objects onto uh, other backgrounds in Photoshop by just ticking off the transparent background checkbox uh, and then you'll get an object that has no background it just has a transparent it's a PNG file of transparency in the back so you can Photoshop it onto other photos and things that you want so uh, this is an important tool to, to note so uh, I'm going to say render I'm gonna shoot off a, a rendering here of this exact point of view I'm gonna uh, open the uh, rendering gallery. Oops. Having a small uh, freeze here. Open up my rendering gallery. So it's local rendering started. There it goes. A few moments later. Okay, so my rendering has completed. I can pop it open here on the rendering gallery. There it is in all its glory. I can download the file download it here onto my desktop I'm gonna pop it open here for you and uh, here it is excellent pretty happy with that and that's pretty basic result using just uh, HDRI lighting from the the scenes that you can uh, manipulate uh, but what if we wanted to actually add some more specific lighting of our own? We can also uh, do that. Um, first thing that I want to uh, mention is um, see how this object is floating in space. We can actually add a background to it and add a material to the background if you want a more specific type of, of material on it. So uh, let's go to the scene settings. I'm going to say the background is a solid color. Uh, I'm going to change the environment to be just a standard sort of cool light environment that gets added to scenes or infusions. I'm going to go back to the vanilla default 
scene that we had a little while ago. I'm also going to change the aspect ratio to go back to uh, widescreen. And let's go back to the design environment. We're going to add an object here. We're going to add uh, a background to render onto. So I'm going to go to the right plane and I'm actually going to start a new sketch here on the right plane. Uh, and then I'm going to add a couple of lines. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I want to make this nice and big. So I'm going to add a line here that's at the floor level all the way back quite a bit and then uh, going up vertically. Uh, say yeah that's good and then I'm gonna go to the fillet tool here in my sketch panel and I'm gonna go to this corner and I'm gonna make a nice generous curve here in the back so I'm gonna finish that sketch see I have this curve here so then I'm gonna head to my surface tools and I'm gonna choose extrude so I'm actually gonna extrude this line and create a nice backdrop I'm gonna say it's a two-sided extrusion Sorry, it's a symmetric extrusion. Create a nice backdrop for myself. Make it nice and big. So uh, now I can add a material to this backdrop and have it do exactly what I want. So I'm going to head back to the uh, Render tab. So of course, by default, it has like a steel material. Uh, so let's hit the, the in canvas renders to see, to see what that does. So it's a pretty interesting sort of steel sheet, nice and reflective here at the back. Um, I'm going to open the appearance panel and I'm going to use the search box in, to search for textured. And I'm looking for this material in specifics called Plax Plastic Textured Random. You might have to click download on, download on this one. Um, I'm going to scroll it, you know, sort of drag it here onto my screen and I have a, a black backdrop. It has a black color by default, but I'm going to head to the In This Design section of the Appearance panel. I'm going to double click on the material that I just inserted, and I'm going to manipulate its color. I'm going to make it a nice uh, sort of golden, golden brown color. And I can, of course, change its uh, roughness here if I wanted to see how the bottles reflecting here on the background if I diminish the roughness it's just gonna become more and more glossy I can see that bottle starts becoming a lot uh, clearer here on the reflection at the bottom and if I want to do the opposite I can drag this up and make it a bit rougher and that reflection is going to be uh, diminished a bit All right, so I've inserted a material here. Now I've manipulated it to be exactly the type of material that I want uh, in my scene. Uh, but now let's say I want to add some lights. There's no specific lighting objects in Fusion 360 yet. Uh, that's coming up sometime in the future. But for now, we can actually insert objects, simple objects into our scene uh, and have them ha have light. So they, they can be emissive materials. They can emit light. So uh, let's head to the design environment once more. And we're going to add a couple of objects to the scene. So I want to add a light that's sort of floating above the, the beer bottle, lighting it, giving me a nice reflection on one side. But I also want to add this little backlight behind it so I can see the amber glass from, from the bottle. So uh, I'm going to add a couple of objects here. Uh, I'm going to head to the Create menu. I'm going to create a sphere here on this plane. It's fine. The size doesn't really matter that much, although I'll probably make it a little smaller than that like a 50 millimeter sphere. I'm going to move it um, upwards and generally be, you know, kind of above and to the front of my uh, beer bottle. Great. And now I'm going to move a copy of this. I'm going to select it, click create copy here on the move and copy menu. Uh, and I'm going to create a new copy of this. And this particular sphere, I want to place way behind the, the bottle. I'm going to head to the front view. Let's have it sit way behind the bottle, maybe a little bit to the left. And you'll see why in a second. Uh, I'm going to click OK. There. So I think that'll probably be good. So I'm going to head back to my rendering environment. I'm going to zoom back here. So as you can see, that sphere is placed there because I want to generate a backlight. And I want to cover that backlight with the label. So that it generates a nice outline, sort of glow here behind the bottle. So now let's go find that emissive 
material. So I'm going to pop open my appearance uh, panel and I'm going to use my search box actually and this material is called LED and it's an LED 50 lumen LED. There's a 20 lumen version, 8 lumen version. Let's grab the 20 lumen version, although you can obviously control the luminosity after you've inserted this into your scene. So I'm going to add this to my objects. And now if I start the in-canvas render, you're going to see exactly what this does. It creates two objects that now emit rays of light, as if they were uh, lamps. So you can use this to really control the, the, the light in your scene. You can generate lamps above that generate a nice reflection on top of shiny things. I mean, you can do a lot with this. So I'm going to actually place my camera angle here where the sphere is sort of hiding behind the label, which is what I want. I want this nice amber glow behind my beer bottle. See how nice that glass starts looking uh, when I have my in-canvas render turned on. And I have this nice amber glow both on the bottle and also on the floor, which has this nice textured look to it. Um, I can, of course, double click here on the light. I can control the color of the light. Let's say I wanted something that's a little warmer, maybe like some kind of orange light that's a bit warmer. It's very, very subtle to change. Let's try and make it uh, way. All right, so I can manipulate the amount of luminance as well. I can go from these uh, 190,000 units to, um, let's say, 390,000 units. So that's a lot more light on the scene. It definitely shows. You can see that on the reflection generated on the floor. Um, I can go back to 19,000, that's our 190,000 units. I think that's just, just enough for this scene. I'm gonna click done. I, that makes me pretty happy. If you start moving this around, you can start revealing that little sphere. You might have to move your, rotate your camera angle just a tiny bit to be the exact shot that you need. So imagine you can apply this light to many different types of uh, geometry to generate really interesting reflections and effects on your objects. You can get really creative with these tools. Uh, I think the Fusion 360 rendering engine uh, it can produce excellent results if you just give it some time and add add some some lighting and just uh, take good care of the, the materials and everything that you're putting in there. It can generate very professional results without needing to go on to another tool. So let's output a rendering here. Uh, I'm to the teapot icon. Uh, I'm going to go to my custom tab. Uh, I can choose from the presets here. I want to have a 1080p render, render here from the, the preset list. I'm going to do this on a local render. I can uh, go to advanced settings and choose the, the final level of quality that I want. Um, usually 75 is fine enough for most uses, so I'm going to shoot off a uh, 75 quality rendering. A few moments later. All right, so one thing you might want to do to speed up the renderings you're producing locally is uh, Fusion, for some reason, once you start a rendering, will actually leave your in-canvas renderer on. So you might want to stop it because you're otherwise you're double taxing your CPU. You're doing something twice. Uh, so you can stop the in-canvas render engine. Uh, my rendering now is, is done. I can um, open it up, download the full-size image. And here it is in all its glory. Looking good. All right, everybody. Uh, I hope you were able to follow, and I hope you're on your way or on your way to creating some great uh, photorealistic renderings of your designs. So I'll see you in the next installment. Thank you.